Do you and the stakeholders at your company trust your data? Have you ever had an unnoticed data error streaming into your dashboards and machine learning models for weeks or months before detecting it? Do you have the mind space to build data pipelines for the future or are you stuck firefighting data issues in the past? Having a guardrail in place that catches and fixes bad data before it causes harm is the difference between a company that is boosted by data and a company that struggles. The good news is that there are common patterns in what bad data looks like, how it appears and why. Introducing Validio. It's simple to use, yet has built-in intelligence and it can be used across your streams, lakes, and warehouses. Validio allows you to bridge the gap between data teams and the business. How? Let's have a look. Hi, I'm Patrick Liu Tran. I'm the CEO and founder of Validio. Prior to starting the company, I worked many years as an AI and data advisor for large enterprises in various industries. And in every single case, I saw firsthand the pain of bad data. Since I couldn't find a good tool to solve the issue, I started the company. Let me show you how it works. Firstly, I'll walk you through the core concepts and views of Validio so you get a feel for how easy it is to understand. Secondly, I'll dive into some deep data observability functionality, and we will do that in four examples. Example one, we will set up a validator with per segment dynamic thresholds. This is a game changer because it allows you to identify anomalies unique to each segment that adapts over time and which takes into account seasonality and trends. Example two, setting up a source. You'll see how easy it is to apply validators to the new source as we recommend many for you automatically based on the profile of the data. You will also see that we can ingest data at any cadence, so regardless of if the data is for a monthly report or a machine learning model that needs data every minute, we got you covered. Example 3. Monitoring of streaming data. It's a technically very difficult task, but with our platform it becomes very easy. A lot can happen before data ends up in your data warehouse, especially if you're working with, for example, IoT data or human input data. By monitoring streams, you can become much more proactive and catch the data much closer to the source. And in example four, we will compare distribution shifts between two sources. This is very important in most machine learning use cases, as you want to make sure that the data in the production model is similar to the data that you use to train the model. Otherwise, you run the risk of making bad decisions, which could lead to bad business outcomes. And thirdly, we will look at some basics how notifications work and how to avoid alert fatigue. Let's jump in. This is the home page where you can instantly get a sense of the health of all of your data. Before going into what is happening in this case, let's walk through some of the core concepts. In the top panel, you see the number of sources you are connected to. For example, a source could be a table in a warehouse, it could be a bucket in uh, your data lake or a topic in your stream. And each source can also have segments. And a segment could be one dimensional, for example, you want to check things per country. You can also combine segments, for example, for each product type per country. Each source have validators that make sure that the data is as we expect it to be. We cover metadata checks such as row count, freshness, schema changes, null value distribution, as well as more granular checks on the actual data. All of these validators can be combined with the segments you've defined. You can set these up yourself or select the ones recommended by Validio. You can also see what coverage you have of all of your sources. And in the middle panel, you see the incidents. These are generated from our validators. And the left graph shows all incidents and the right table sorts validators by incident rate. And here we actually see that the health of our data has been quite good up until the last two weeks. And since then we've had a bit of trouble with two of our validators. So let's drill down into the freshness validator since that one is the one with the highest incident rate. 
Let's see what has happened here. This is the standard view for a validator. If data points are within the green area, they are acceptable. If they are outside, we have an incident and they turn red. In this example, we have a static threshold for freshness. We don't want the data to be older than two days. And the right panel shows you column level stats, for example, the time period, the mean value, and the maximum and the minimum. If there are incidents, they show up below with the corresponding value, timestamps, and how much they deviate from the threshold. So what happened here? Here's where the segmentation is really cool. We're looking at segment South Korea. So we had 12 incidents in South Korea last month. No other segments appear to have had any incidents with freshness. Had we not segmented this source, the source would have appeared totally fresh since we got data from the other segments and we wouldn't have caught any issues at all. Let's investigate this further. Maybe a source upstream stopped working. We'll just go down to the data point on 22nd of March and add it as an investigative issue in JIRA. Create a ticket and notify the appropriate team. Now you know the core concepts. You've seen the homepage and the validator view. Let's now explore some observability features that we classify as deep. Let's set up a validator in one of our big query tables called Sales Data 2. We want to showcase our per segment dynamic thresholds and backfill functionality. It allows you to detect potentially dangerous anomalies that are well hidden in parts of the data. The initialization with backfill is very important as we then can get instant thresholds that are adapted based on historical data. This means that you will be able to identify anomalies from day one without any predefined rules. This is a quite standard sales table. We have our order ID and average order value in local currency and in Euro. We have three dimensions, so currency, country and channel. Since the purchasing behavior differs so much from country to country and from channel to channel, we've defined segments for those uh, dimensions. Notice here that we've also defined two dimensional segments. So looking at each channel within each country. Let's set up a validator with dynamic thresholds. Let's select numeric and look at the mean value. Let's look at the average order value AOV in both local currency and euro and segment by country and channel. These are tons of string filters, null filters, numerical threshold filters, which allow you to only validate a subsection of the data. But let's keep this clean for now. The threshold is what creates the green area we've looked at in the validator view. In other words, this is what decides what is an incident or not. Let's create a dynamic threshold with sensitivity of two. The higher number of the sensitivity, the more narrow threshold you will have. It will be more sensitive to changes in the data. We want a double-sided threshold, so let's keep the decision bounds type on upper and lower. Now we see that two new validators have been created. Let's go into the one called average order value local currency and see how it looks. The thresholds are now one, adapted on a segment by segment level, and two, historical data is instantly taken into account with a backfilling functionality. This means that we instantly know how incidents look like in each segment based on historical patterns. We can even gain some insights into the historical data. In our Amazon channel in Sweden, we seem to have a strong weekly pattern centered around two to 3,000 in local currency. Our offline channel in Sweden seem to have more of a monthly pattern and the AOV seem to be much higher. Our offline channel in Finland doesn't seem to have any cyclical pattern at all. And the values here are much lower since Finland has a different currency than Sweden. All segments have a unique threshold and all of these thresholds adapt over time. This level of observability would not have been possible with static thresholds. If we feel that the thresholds are too tight or loose, we can easily adapt them. A higher sensitivity implies more incidents will be caught. You can also easily change to a one-sided threshold. Let's keep the current settings. We see that we have two outliers in the last month. 
one in the segment offline, Sweden, and one in Amazon, Sweden. Looking at the Amazon Sweden segment, we see that something strange happened over the weekend. It could be a technical issue, for example, orders with new values might have slipped in. It could also be an actual issue, meaning that you maybe accidentally sent out a large discount code. Or, the data is expected. Let's report it anyway and have the responsible marketing and data team look at it. Let's set up a source on a data lake with a one minute cadence. This flexibility allows you to use Validio for different types of use cases, whether it's for data that you use for monthly reporting or if it's for machine learning use cases where you need the data checked every minute, we've got you covered. We will also walk through Validio's recommendation of validators based on the data source and how the data looks like. Let's dig in. We'll go with Google Cloud Storage. So you just input the credentials and configuration information. This step is important. It defines how often we ingest the data from the client. This is fully customizable. Let's look at every minute. Validio pulls in the schema and recognize what types of fields we're working with. We can change fields here, make them nullable and change the data type. We define a window and that is the time range for how we calculate our metrics. There are different types and here we'll use a file window, which means we treat every file as a window. Now we're good to go and ready to start setting up validators on this source. As you see, we give a few recommendations right off the bat. As more data flows in, Validio will give more advanced recommendations based on data profiling. Let's select all these validators and hit apply. Next, we will set up a streaming data source and validators on top. A lot can happen before data actually lands in your data lakes or warehouses. Therefore, it's very important that you can monitor also the streams and get closer to where the data is actually produced. We will use Amazon Kinesis in this case. Monitoring streams is one of the more difficult things to do from a technical perspective, but look how easy we have made it in our platform. The source is now up and running. We have also auto-generated validators that we recommend. If we look at one of them, you see that data is flowing in in real time and everything right now looks great. We can now be comfortable deploying our real-time use cases as we would be the first ones to know if anything goes wrong. Let's now look at a common machine learning use case. We have two data sets. One is the training data that we train the model on and one is the production data that we feed the model for inference. And when we have this kind of setup, it is very important to monitor for drifts and shifts in the data. We want to make sure that the training data is representative of the production data that we feed the model. Otherwise, we might want to retrain the model, right? Otherwise, there is a very big risk that you end up making faulty decisions at scale. And that can lead to bad business outcomes, such as costly mistakes, bad customer experience, or missed opportunities and lost revenues. We can easily detect these kind of shifts and drifts based on our distribution validator. Validio can look at both categorical and numerical distributions. Let's look at the numerical version in this case. Let's use the training data as our reference source, which means we are now comparing how similar the production data is with the training data. But here we could also just have compared the production data with itself back in time, right? As long as the relative entropy is close to zero, our model should behave as expected. If the production data starts to drift compared to the training data, our model might give unexpected results. Luckily, we will be able to capture it here very easily. And the great thing is we barely need to understand what relative entropy is or what is good or bad. The system will figure it out for us with the dynamic thresholds. As long as it's in the green, we're good. And if it goes into the red, then you need to dig deeper into what has happened with your production data in relation to your training data. This is really easy to use.
We have now showcased some of our deep data observability functionalities. Let's now focus on some more basic but still very important ones. Notification is the way we give you awareness of when there is an incident that you should pay attention to. And here it is very important to avoid alert fatigue. If you get alerted for things that are not relevant, you will lose interest over time. You can set up broad basic alerts, looking for credential failures, schema changes, but also you can connect them to your validators and incidents. Each notification can be directed to a Slack channel, Microsoft Teams, a webhook, so it's very flexible. This allows you to direct the notification to the responsible teams, so they can act on it properly. Let's set up a notification for our sales data and direct this to our data team. Now, we've covered some of the things that Validio can help you with, but there is so much more. For example, we have destinations, which allows you to write out bad data into the destination of your choice. It might be a table, stream or bucket. And that allows you to automatically act on the bad data without having a human in the loop. We have support for semi-structured data, which is important, especially if you want to go end-to-end -end, uh, validating things in the warehouse but more importantly, lake and streams where semi-structured data is more common. Fundamentally, Validio gives you confidence in your data. We want you to spend time on what matters, building great products and services. Get started today. Reach out to us. Thanks for watching.